Hello, 3D printing friends. It's time for another Monoprice Mod Mondays on the BB3D channel. Today, we're going to finish installing TL smoother boards on the Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. Stick around and I'll show you how it's done. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. So today we are installing TL smoother boards on the X and Y axes, but before we install them, we'll need to print a mounting plate for them, and before we print a mounting plate, we'll need to design it in Tinkercad. Well, you won't. I already did. It's on Thingiverse, and there's a link down in the description. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to walk you through the design process and show you how to do it yourself. In the Smoother Parator video, I talked about using a space model of the TL smoother board so we could design a mount that would attach to the X carriage, and then we could wire the smoother to the extruder stepper motor. We're going to reuse that space model to design the mounting plate for the X and Y axis smoothers. There is a spine along the inside of the printer body which separates the power supply side from the mainboard side, and there is room on the mainboard side of that spine to mount our smoothers, so that's where they're going to go. Let's go over to Tinkercad and get started. Okay, so I've created a new document in Tinkercad, and as usual, it gave it a weird name. Rather than Funky Robo NRE, let's call it TL Smoother Tandem Mount. There we go. Now, I want to drag out a couple of TL smoothers, and I keep those in Tinkercad's part collection. Let's scroll down here and get into that. I have a few space models in there, and I'm going to grab a couple of TL smoother boards and drag them out onto the work plane. There we go. Switch back to the basic shapes. Yes, yeah, move these around a bit. Get them a little lined up. Okay, we got our two, and let's uh, grab those, move them up out of the way, and let's grab a box and put out here. We're gonna need to build a platform for these to go on. I, I guess before we build a platform, we're gonna need to know the dimensions that it needs to occupy. So let's get these teal smoother boards. Let's drag them back down here. We'll take the two, select them, line them up, Get them aligned on their centers. Let me nudge this back over so it's touching and then move it back away. Five millimeters, that's, that's about how I want those together. So I'm going to select those two boards and group them. And now we can get the dimensions. And so that's about 86 and a half by 30 and a half millimeters. So we'll want to go a little bit larger, larger than that on this cube. We're going to turn this into a short platform. So we'll set the width. And we'll make that uh, about maybe 90 or so, 88, sounds good. And we'll set the length on it, what was that measurement? 30 and a half, so maybe 32. There we go. And I really only need the height to be about two millimeters. So we'll set that here. All right, now we've got a platform that we can put these on. In order to put them on the platform though, we're going to need some standoffs to mount them in. So let's grab a cylinder. And for screw standoffs, I like to set them to about uh, eight millimeters in diameter. And what about maybe three millimeters tall? I don't know if that's tall enough. Let's take a look and see how that looks at three millimeters. Eh, that looks a little too short. Let's bump that up to about four. All right. And then we're going to need another cylinder to go inside. And that's going to be where we hollow it out for the screw. So I'm going to set that to 3.1 millimeters. The, I'm using M3 screws on these. And that should just provide a nice fit. We'll drop the height of this one down a little bit because it's the, the default 20 millimeter height. Maybe about 5 millimeters. And we'll take those two, select them use the alignment tool and center them on each other. There we go. Get those highlighted. And I'm not gonna group them together yet. I think I'm gonna, I want the screw to come down a little bit further into the platform. So I'm gonna increase the height of that, that, HUD, uh, that cutout. And we're gonna drop it down just a bit. We'll make that smooth. Do I want to smooth? No, I don't need to smooth the, the standoff. We're going to drop this down about a millimeter so that when we get it over on the platform, it will actually cut the screw hole a millimeter down into the platform. So let's bring this up too. So 
So it's the bottom of the standoff is flush with the, uh, with the platform. We can bring the smoother boards over and we're gonna get the standoffs lined up with the screw holes. So let's get the smoother brought up and we'll kind of check and make sure that we get our height set. Zoom in on that. I probably want to pull that down just a smidgen. Pull it down to five, maybe 4.9. It looks like it needs to come down a little, 4.8. Let's try that. 1.7, that's down a little bit more. Let's zoom in and see how close that is. Click that and then zoom in. Eh, that's, can we pull it down a little bit more easily? Let's get the, the height adjuster again. Maybe 4.6. Zoom in again, I think that's close enough. That's close enough, that's good enough for what we, for what we need to do. Let's, uh, let's get looking at the top of this again. All right, let's switch to the home view and then we can switch to the top view and we'll work on getting these lined up. So I'm gonna highlight this stuff in here and then I'm gonna deselect the boards and the platform so I can nudge the screw hole and the standoff individually. Very gently nudge that into place, there we go. Set my grid back to one millimeter and I'm gonna duplicate this part and start nudging it over to go to the next screw hole over to the left. And we need to kind of fine nudge it again. So we'll set our grid to 0.1 millimeters and then set it back to one millimeter. Duplicate again, get the standoff lined up where we need it. Do this one more time. Position it just right. Then we need to grab those four standoffs and then duplicate them. So we're gonna select all of this stuff, deselect the platform and the smoother boards again, and duplicate, and then nudge up. Let me get my grid set. We'll nudge these up into place on these other screw holes. And kind of nudge them a teensy smidge higher. There we go. So relative to the smoother boards, that's where those need to go. Let's get the let's get the smoother boards out of the way. And we'll get the platform out of the way and we'll group these together. That way they can move as a unit and we can Oh wait a minute. I don't want, I don't want to group those yet because I want them to I want those to be able to cut into the into the board. Wait, now let's group them. We'll center them on the board or on the platform. There we go. Line them up. Then we can ungroup them. And we'll group them again with the platform. And that will allow those, those cylinder holes to cut down into the platform to give us a little bit of extra clearance for the screws. All right. Now we have those in place, and then we can sort of test the alignment by dragging the smoother boards down over here. We'll just select these and use the alignment tool. Get them lined up, take a look, and that looks about right. So our standoffs with the built-in screw holes are positioned the way we need. So we should be able to now, there we go, switch to a perspective view so you can see that a little bit better. That's just a little platform for the smoother boards to go on. And that protects the underside of them from coming into contact with metal inside the printer. So we'll take this and we'll export that out. Save it out as an STL. And there we go. So real quick, now that we've got that file exported as an STL, we can drag it here into our slicer and I'm gonna print that at 0.2 millimeter layer height. 
and I've got my settings for my MG Chemicals PETG Black, and that's that's the part. That's what we're going to do. So let's export the G code. We'll throw that out on the desktop and save. Now we can drag the G code into Octoprint. Then we'll select that. Make sure Octolapse is on. And it is. Bed is clear. All good. Let's start. This took a little under an hour to print. Here it is in about five seconds. Here is the finished product. Let's put it down here on the desk and get the smoothers mounted on it. Okay, here is the mounting plate. Got a couple of smoother boards and a set of screws here. And really we're just screwing these boards down onto the plate, so. We'll get the screws in loosely, and then we'll come back through later and tighten them down all the way. So in order to install the smoothers, we will need access to the inside of the printer. Getting access to the inside of the printer is fairly simple. We will remove the two screws that hold the cross brace in place, and we will set the cross brace aside. Then we will remove the six screws that hold the bottom cover in place. And with those screws removed, we can set the cover aside as well. And there is the inside of the printer. We're going to need to get some of these cables out of our way, so we'll start by unplugging them. This is the Y limit switch cable. This is the Z limit switch cable. And this is the bed temperature sensor. These are all color coded with their connectors, so they're, they're easy to put back. This is the heated bed connector. And this is the power input connector to the main board. Okay, so I've got those cables that we unplugged a moment ago zip tied together in a small bundle down at the bottom of the screen just to keep them out of the way. Let's get our double-sided servo tape, that foam tape, and apply that to the underside of the smoother mount that we made. Peel the backing off of that. And then we'll get that attached to that spine that runs through the inside of the printer. And we're attaching this in the area where all of the stepper motors plug into the main board. There we go. Now I want to unplug the connectors for the Z-axis stepper motors just to get them out of the way temporarily. Then we'll unplug the cable that goes to the Y-axis stepper motor and plug that into the output of one of the smoother boards. Then we'll plug the smoother board input into the main board where the Y-axis connector went. We're going to repeat that process for the X-axis stepper motor. And with those in place, now we can reconnect our Z-axis steppers. And then we can work on reconnecting the other wires that we have in this bundle down here. We'll cut that zip tie. And then we can start plugging them back in. We'll plug in the main board power connector. We'll plug in the heat bed power connector. We'll plug in the heat bed thermistor connector. 
and we'll plug in the z-axis limit switch and the y-axis limit switch. Then we can neaten the cables up a little bit and reattach the bottom cover. Closing the printer back up is the opposite of opening it. We'll put the plate back in place and we will reattach the screws. Get those tightened in. Reattach the cross brace. And then stand the printer back up. And we're done. So we've seen that installing the TL smoother boards on the X and Y axes is pretty easy. We've also seen how to design a simple mounting plate with standoffs and screw holes for the smoothers. If you do this mod, let me know whether you see an improvement in the quality of your prints. Well, we're at the end of the video, so this is the part where I say things like like, subscribe, and share because those things really do help the channel. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you don't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel through a one-time micropayment, you can buy me a coffee or drop a tip in the PayPal jar. There's links for those in the description below. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so by clicking the BV3D icon right over here and ring the bell to be notified when I release new videos. Over here is a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. That's all the time we have for today. I'm going to go print something cool. You print something cool too. See you next time.